Hi, I'm Lena Michalek, and our channel mainly revolves around guns, but as a gun enthusiast, I'm also a really big knife enthusiast, and I've learned that gun owners and people on the range and things like that also really love knives, and they really just go hand in hand. So I want to talk to you today about my favorite style of knife, which is the butterfly knife, or better known, or more properly known as the Bally Song. And my favorite ballet song of all is the Blade Runner's Alpha Beast. So to give you a little bit of background on the ballet song, it was mainly used in the Philippines for a really long time. They used it for everything. It was just an everyday carry knife. They were mainly made out of wood and bone, and they were really beautiful works of art. They used them as straight razors before those were popular over there, so they were just, they were everywhere. They didn't really start becoming popular in the U.S. until the late 70s when Bally Song the Company started making them, which Bally Song the Company is now known as Benchmade, which also still makes really nice Bally Songs. But when they started making them, the market really took off for them. And also, for you that are wondering, is a Bally Song actually legal? It is. I get a lot of people telling me it's not legal. It is. The only state it is not legal to own in is Hawaii, which if you're from Hawaii, I'm really sorry because you're really missing out on a fantastic knife. So you can just watch this video and lust after all these beautiful knives that I have up here. <laughs> but it is legal to carry in the vast majority of states. I think there are a few states like California and New York that you're allowed to own them but you can't carry them on your person. Guys, before you carry or even buy a knife, whether it be a ballet song or a folding knife, I'd really suggest checking your local laws. You don't know what might have just passed or what already existed. There's a lot of laws out there. The laws that are current, though, or the ones that have been in use for a long time or been enforced for a long time, were really made to target gang members. And the law enforcement agents that I've talked to really don't enforce them. They're more of just like a crime when they're really trying to get somebody. So. Anyways, something to think about. You may wonder also why I would like a ballet song instead of just your traditional folding knife. So a folding knife for me, it just is not nearly as interesting for one as a ballet song. Also, you have to worry about folding. It may fold on your hand, whether the locking mechanism breaks or something when you're cutting. If you're cutting some really heavy duty things, which I never know what I'm going to be coming across since we live on a range and we do a lot of outside work, whether it's building props for stages or I just feel like cutting something because I'm ADD and I like to cut things, <laughs> no matter what it be. But um, I would always have to worry about it folding on me with a ballet song. Once you have the handles out, it's really just like a fixed blade. You don't have to worry about it. It's just there. Especially if you even wanted to lock the handles. It, it's a fixed blade to me. That's really it. It's just a lot easier to carry a fixed blade. And also, what I like about this compared to this is I can manipulate this with one hand. Even with my left hand, which I cannot do much with my left hand. But I can at least open my knife one-handed with my left hand or my right hand. I also like the fact that I can open it into the backwards position or into the forwards position. It's really a lot better for me and no matter how I grab my knife, whether it's in my purse or my pocket or wherever I have it, when I grab it I know I can open it one hand and I can do it easily. Also, you'll notice that it's a lower profile. This blade is actually longer than this folding knife and it's still a lower profile. So I like to carry it so it's really nice for that. Another thing is, if I'm going to have a knife, I mean, this, this definitely has a cool factor that this doesn't. This is a very nice folding knife, but it's just, it's just not this knife. I mean, this knife, it's, it's really a beautiful knife. It's well made. It's a lot of fun. And I have, well, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I have ADD when I'm, I don't sit well and I don't, I just don't wait well. So when I have this, I can always get it out, I can flip it, I have something to do. I really like it when I'm on the range. If it's like a stressful event or something like that, I can always get this out of my pocket and play with it and it helps almost de-stress me or take the focus off or the pressure off of whatever I'm doing. So I really, I really like it. So if you have ADD, this might be something to look into if you just 
always are needing to move or needing something to occupy you. So guys, whether you already own a ballet song or you're looking into buying a ballet song, I'm going to show you the differences in the knives that I already own compared to my Alpha Beast. So we're going to start out with the M Tech Twist. This is the cheapest of the knives that I have today to show you. The latch is broken and the tang pin is broken, but and it's been a pretty good knife. Um, I don't really have that many complaints except for it breaking, but it is also made out of stainless steel. Moving on to the Bradley Kimura 2. It is the heaviest of all the knives that I have out here. It weighs 5.4 ounces and it also is made of stainless steel. It's pretty sturdy and I've had it for quite a while. Okay, moving on to the Benchmade 51. It is very light. It weighs 3.3 ounces. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, 3.3 ounces. It has blue anodized titanium inlays with G10 Ooh, G10 scales. <laughs> there we go. G10 scales and a D2 tool steel blade. It also has a spring latch and a pocket clip. It's been a uh, it's very lightweight. When you hold it in your hands, it it doesn't feel as balanced or as sturdy. It has been it has been a reliable knife for me though. And it has the spear point or spear tip shaped blade. Moving on to the Benchmade 41, which is a limited edition of the Benchmade 42. It became really popular in a couple of recent movies, so they're pretty hard to find. It also has the spear point inspired blade. It also has, oh, oh, I can't talk, has titanium handles and a D2 steel blade. It is skeletonized handles and it does also have the spring latch and the pocket clip. This one it is very appealing to the eye because it is all shiny but I personally don't like that as much because in Louisiana in the hot summers your hands can be all sweaty and you're working outside and since I use mine as more of a tool um, I use a lot outside and I'm always afraid that I would maybe drop this or not be able to manipulate it the way I would want to so I prefer the Alpha Beast to this because it does have more of a grippy texture. Moving on to the Alpha Beast, we have, of course my favorite, um, it has almost a Bowie inspired blade, um, only I like it more than the Bowie blade, it's really appealing to the eye. It has stainless steel handles again and 154cm, oh wait, one, wait, oh, <laughs> I'm getting my knives confused, it has titanium handles and 154cm blade, there we go. This the latch is not a spring latch, but it doesn't get in the way. It's designed so if your handles were to hit together, it would get out of the way. So it's very nifty in that aspect. It has these chevron patterns on it, which don't only look good, but when you're grabbing your knife, whether it be out of your pocket or for me out of my purse, um, you always know where your hand is on your knife. So whenever you want to open it or close it, you know exactly where your hand is and you don't have to worry about it. So that is something that I really like about it. And like I talked about, it's not shiny. It has this matte finish on it, which I prefer because I feel like I have a better grip on it for when I'm cutting things. I don't have to worry about it slipping out of my hand or anything like that. So I really enjoy that. It, the overall length of the knife is 9.8 inches. The blade is 4.5 inches and it weighs 5.1 ounces. So compared to the Bradley, it is, it is lighter. To give you a comparison of just overall length, the Alpha Beast is by far the largest knife of all the knives that we have here today. But I don't know, it's just to go more on like the the visual aspect of it, I think out of all these knives, it is the most appealing. I really love the way that it looks. When you hold it in your hands, it feels super sturdy. You just know that it's a really well-made, well-designed knife. It just, it's, it's almost inspiring. You know how you look at a gun and you're just like, wow, that's just beautiful. You know, they just made this with love and they really cared about what they were doing. And it wasn't just some guy in a shed building it, not knowing what he was doing. He really put a lot of thought into this. This was, this was designed by 
true professionals of the flipping sport, which I am by no means a flipper, but this was designed for flipping. It's beautifully balanced. When you hold it in your hand, it just it feels fantastic. It has um, spacing or um, blocks in the handles to make it better balanced, which you can definitely tell. This one, when you pick it up, you can feel that it's, it's not nearly as balanced. Um, but that's because this one's made for flipping. It's heavier duty. What else do we have to say about this? It has bushings in the handles here, which is different than the other ones. Um, in these right here, no matter how tightly you screw in the screws, the handles, anything, you don't have to worry about the blade locking up. As in these, if I were to take these and just really crank down these screws, it would get to the point where I couldn't open it. This one, you don't ever have to worry about this, which I like because I'm really bad about over torquing things. I want to make sure that it's held together really well. I don't have to worry about that with this knife. So there's just really a ton of great aspects of this knife. It's beautifully made. It's just <laughs> one of my favorite stories. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that likes to impress other people with the things that I have. I know it's probably not the best aspect, but um, there were a group of shooters standing around and they were getting their knives out and they're like, oh yeah, this is blah blah. And I went up there and I was just like, oh yeah, look at this. This is awesome. And everyone was like, wow, that is an awesome knife. And I got to just expose people to what a ballet song is and why I like it. So it's really, it's just really cool to have in your pocket. <laughs> I really enjoy the knife. I, I truly do. So I'm sure by this point in the video, you're just like, man, I freaking want one of these knives so bad. Don't fret. In the description box below, we'll have a link to where you can buy it. So when you go and buy this knife, this is what you can expect to get. You'll get this very nice box. When you open it up, your knife will be very secure and safely packed in a whole bunch of foam. It'll have a nice business card. And also, better than Christmas, you'll get your knife out and you'll be so excited, just like I was. <laughs> So to talk a little bit more about the knife, um, something that you want to look at when you're buying a ballet song is handle play. This one has very minimal handle play because it is a very well designed knife. We'll just look at the Benchmade 51. It has a bit more, which handle play is something that is it's really a negative in the knife. So this one has very minimal. It's very well built. Another thing about this knife it is a sandwich design, which means these are two separate pieces of metal. They're sandwiched together on the block spacer with screws compared to the Benchmade 41, which is based after the Benchmade 42, which is a channel design, which means this is just this was at one point just one solid piece of steel that they channeled out for the knife. I'm not steel, a solid piece of titanium that they channeled out for the blade to go into. So it's just different designs. Um, remember that the Benchmade 52 was like, oh, Benchmade 42, was the holy grail of flipping knives. It was what everyone sought after. It was just, it was, it was the knife. It was, it was what everyone wanted until the Alpha Beast came out. This is, this is the only knife that has been able to replace the 42, and it has done a fantastic job. That's at least what I think. It's I can't really talk enough about it. I truly love this knife. And when I was talking about the length, maybe you were concerned about, oh well it's gonna be too big to carry, blah blah blah. The length is actually something that makes it so balanced. Is I just I wish you could just hold this knife. If you ever get a chance to just hold this knife it'll just be like crap. I really need one. <laughs> It's one of those things that you hold and you'll forever want if you don't buy it, so you should just go ahead and buy it. It's my suggestion for you. Another thing, it has phosphorus bronze washers, which means ph phosphorus bronze washers right here in the handles, which, me which means, ooh, that's hard to say, that it, it makes it exceedingly smooth for flipping. It's something that's really just an upgrade from all the other knives out there. This knife, if there was ever anything you desired in a ballet song that another knife didn't have, this one has it. I really, I'm super excited for the second generation one of this to come out because I, I don't know what they're going to do <laughs> to make this better. So that's just another thing to look forward to. 
But if you can't wait till then, which I don't think I could wait till the second generation came out, I would definitely go ahead and check this knife out if you're looking for a knife. Like I said, I'm not a, a real hardcore flipper by any means. I'm more of like a practical flipper. I use it as an everyday tool. I mean, this has cut everything from... It's helped me do everything from unjamming my gun to building stage props to cutting steak at restaurants when the steak knives were really crappy. <laughs> It, it really does everything. So if you're looking into a knife, definitely check this one out. So since I mentioned the second generation, I went on their website just to double check. And it is actually released. It was just released. So we'll have a link in the description box below for that knife. I would definitely go check it out. They say that they've improved it, which I'm not sure how they how they can improve this knife, but they said they did it by softening the edges and making it have higher tolerances. So I'm super excited about that knife and I really hope soon to get my hands on one so I can tell you about it. But there are more exciting things in the work in the works from Blade Runners. So this is Blade Runners version of the Benchmade 42. The new knife that they're working on, which is called the Replicant, is going to be pretty much their version of the Benchmade 51. So it's going to be way lighter weight. It's going to have the G10 scales on it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the most tactical knife ever. It's gonna. Be, I'm so excited. It's gonna look so amazing. So I really can't wait to get my hands on that next knife and do another review for you guys. Also, I would like to ask you to subscribe. We have a Barrett 50 cal coming in this week, and I am just. I'm so excited. We've literally been talking about this rifle for months since we've decided that we were going to get one in. I am going to try and do some offhand shots with it, so it's going to be pretty exciting. I have not shot a Barrett standing up. I'm not even sure if I can hold it up. I'm pretty sure I can. I, th I think I'll be able to do it for at least one shot. So I'm going to go for the glory, and I'm definitely going to stand up and try some offhand shooting with the Barrett.